but I'm delighted to say Gary Oldman is here. Gary, good afternoon. Hello, how are you? Uh, we're doing very well and we're very pleased to have you here. This is fairly typical of the correspondence that we've had on your film uh, from Jaslyn in Kingsham. Gary is one of the finest actors I've ever had the pleasure to watch, whether he's Dracula or Commissioner Gordon or the baddies in both Fifth Element or Lost in Space, sheer brilliance, not forgetting Harry Potter, Air Force One, amazing accent, or any of the other amazing productions he's been a part of. I will go to the cinema for the first time in three years to watch Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy just because Gary is possibly the best British actor ever. Just that we'd start... That is very... Very, that's very kind. I hope I, I hope I won't disappoint. Well, not in the <laughs> film you don't at all, does <laughs> We've just been talking about plot spoilers uh, with sort of stories that are well known. I mean, we're talking about Jane Eyre from the 1840s and yeah. we've also been talking about Shakespeare. As well. But it occurs to me there will be many people who do not know the story of Tinker yeah. Taylor's Soldiers. But tell us what you can, oh. Gary, and then we'll take it from there. Uh, well, I play George Smiley, who is a, a, an operative, MI, MI5, MI6. Um, he's forced into um, early retirement. There's a sort of a takeover, younger blood coming in. Um, uh, it, it is uh, known that there is a, a, a mole. Or it is suspected that there is a mole. Or suspected there is a mole. Um, uh, obviously, trading secret, secrets and you know, swapping secret information... And uh, Master Spy George Smiley is asked to, uh, to, to is invited back to the circus, to the company, hmm. and um, and uh, and there follows an investigation um, to, to to find to find the mole. It, it's an extraordinary film, and Mutt will uh, dissect in just a moment. But it occurred to me, that just in the broadest sense, that there will be a whole audience who, who want to go and see this film for whom the Cold War needs to be explained. Wow. That you know, that's Right, remind me, the Soviet Union, what did they... And that whole thing which people who grew up in the 60s and 70s yeah. were familiar with, that of nu the nuclear threat, the thought yeah. that, that it was nuclear obliteration and it was just around the corner. Yeah. It seems such a long time ago, it sort of needs to be told again. Well, yeah, yes, I mean, the... We... I mean... The, it's we're in much the same kind of situation, uh, I guess. It's just that the um, it, uh, the enemy changes. Um, uh, I at the time, um, the sort of the 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 hormones and genes in my body were sort of rearranging themselves at the time I was a teenager. It's nineteen seventy three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh and it was it was only it was only there occasionally when something would happen and that you'd be reminded of it that it was that the, that threat was there. Um I was uh discovering girls and um and David Bowie. And uh, wasn't too interested in sort of what was what what politically was happening. Um, yeah, yeah. So that but the that whole global politics thing will need to be. But you know, so when my kids ask me about it, I say, okay, well, the Soviet, it was, you know, the, it was a, this was the Cold War. This is when it stopped. You know, when the Berlin Wall came down. Yeah. But that whole sort of sense of terror which people had is will will need to be explained. Can you just but, tell us? Yeah. Go on. Well, it's very much. I mean, it's very. That is very much. I think uh, what I th why I think the book particularly is enjoyed uh, longevity. Um, it is yes, it's the Cold War, it, um, it, but that is very much. It's espionage. It's spies, but it is very much um, uh, a backdrop. Mm. To a story that is very human. See, I think I, I, I think the key to it. And I, forgive me for disagreeing with you, Simon. Although it won't be the first time. I think that what's at the centre of it is whether you understand the politics or not. It is a story about malaise. It is about you know distrust. It is a story about a group of men together, all doubting each other. The central character who's completely conflicted. He has this personal life which he's had to shut out. I mean, it seems to me that actually. Re Almost regardless of the particular political paradigm, it is about, you know, it is about distrust. It is about that creeping sense of paranoia. It is about people in rooms infected by cigarette smoke and being, you know, oppressed by the, you know, by the dust of distrust, as opposed to any particular political. I think you could watch it without knowing anything about the Cold War and still understand it. Mm. 
Yes, yeah, and on a, on a human level, I mean, it's a story that is about love, about love lost. It's about betrayal. It's about the um, uh, friendship. It's about morality. It's about loyalty. It's got all of those, all, all of those themes. Can you tell us something about working with Thomas Alfredson? Because obviously, Alfredson directed Let the Right One In, which was my favourite film of a couple of years ago. I think he's a, an extraordinary filmmaker. And in, for me, in the same way that Let the Right One In isn't a vampire movie, it's a movie about kids yeah. that happens to be about vampires. It yeah. felt to me that Tinker Tailor Soldier Boy wasn't an espionage movie. It's a movie about men that happens to have espionage in it. What's he like to work with? Well, he doesn't think he's made a thriller. <laughs> I mean, he'd I don't, say, I don't understand what that means. Um, he's a true uh, artist, a, a true original. I'll give you an example of a sort of, of, a, of, a, of a day on the set with, with Tomas. There's a scene in the movie where we go to the safe house, and there's a place where... All, all these uh, all these secrets are being leaked where uh, where they where, where they all meet and uh, uh, towards the end of the movie we have a sort of a, a stakeout and we go and we go to this we he it was smiley finds out where this where this house is and I am invited into a room and it is bugged and I just I ask a few question i think i say to i think i say you know it's uh, what w- what's the procedure and where are the microphones and it's the old school kind of this is very old school analog world mm. you know with the with the microphone in the chandelier and the real sort to real of, tape recorders yes yeah. and you signal with you signal to each other by you know knocking on the wall um and the it's not, it's, 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 yes it's not james james bond and and, and the born identity um but I, I i walk into this room and it's a very it's a very simple scene and before we went in um, we rehearsed it and he took me to one side and he just said you know this is where it all sort of goes down this is the room where all the sort of the, the, all the betrayal kind of happens and he said so it's 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 contaminated the room for you is contaminated and he said, imagine if you were to go to a gas chamber in Auschwitz and visit an empty gas chamber. He said, it's, it's, it's per- the air is almost permeated with the, with, 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 the, with the past. Now, that's not something I'm necessarily, uh, you, you know, the, the, the shift in temperature to what I was doing in the rehearsal and then to what I eventually do in the take after that note may be it may be so slight you might not even see it but he gave me the idea he put the thought in my head and i i think that then it 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 it, it tells you it, it tells you something about the scene the way you walk into the room the way you react to the room um it's a very very subtle thing but that is a fantastic note that's a great i think that that was that's a great piece of direction is 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 smiley the most still character you've been because there are so many scenes and i didn't see the tv series and i haven't and i hadn't read yeah. the book where you sit and observe i mean that is what, what it, some one of the things that Smiley is fantastically, but the first few scenes we see you don't say a word. No, I don't say anything for about fifteen minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I in, in the past I've been asked to play these sort of characters that emotionally express themselves in a very sort of physical way, um, and uh, the sort of uh, bandits, outsiders, psychotics, and musicians, musicians, Same thing. Um, and uh, <laughs> homosexual playwrights. Um, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> um, it, so this was a role I think I'd been waiting for for thirty years. It's it's what I call a sitting down part. It's 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 a joy to be asked to have an interior life, but uh, but you express it vocally and just through maybe a, a, the smallest gesture, a, a, a twitch of the eye or. You know, it's a joy to be asked to do something like this, to actually sit in a chair and listen and to react. So I wonder if um, 
many people will react to when I having watched it yesterday I wanted to go back and watch it again mm. straight away because I think I probably want to see again because I'm sure I missed a raised eyebrow uh, or a little glance we were discussing I won't even talk about the particular but two because it's a fantastic cast but two of the cast members towards the end of the film are looking at, at each other uh, in a meaningful way and I'm not sure whether I I got one meaning, and I'm not sure if I was supposed to get another meaning, but I think I'm going to have to go and watch it yeah. again now. But it seems that every gesture is loaded with at least yes. three meanings. But actually, the, the whole milieu of it, that, that what anybody says cannot be either taken at face value or trusted, or maybe in certain circumstances it can. But the fact that it, the film manages to evoke an atmosphere in which two people glancing at each other across a room has you, for the next two or three days, thinking, what exactly did that glance mean? Also because Alfredson has sort of cranked up the, the sexuality of it as well, that there's a very, very sort of tense, repressed sort of you know, homoeroticism going on. It is, all that, you know, what is in that glance? That's what the whole film plays at level. I think you said it when you said it has a raised eyebrow instead of a car chase. I mean, it's every bit as, you know... as Yeah, I mean, it's all, I think it's very audacious. Of, of, of Tomas. Did you um, know what? that it was going to work when he was doing it? Did you know that he was on the right course? I think we, yes. I mean, I think we felt that we had sort of something special going in. Um, you just had to trust him. I mean, I'd seen what he'd done before. I liked him very much. He's very smart, very bright, very talented. And so you just... Um, well, well, coming back to that thing you said about but, but, but about something being very, very, doing very little, or very something that's just uh, so minimal, you have to you in that situation you have to trust the director because sometimes you feel you're doing you're not maybe doing anything, um, and it's all sort of happening. You're trying to to put put forward this sort of this inner life that you that, that that's going on. Um, and you have to put your trust in a director. Um, you know, is it reading? Is it is it is it is it working? And and Thomas would 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 take you through and guide you. Not many takes. He doesn't do a lot of takes. It's two takes. And having directed on Nil by Mouth, are you one of the actors who wants to then go and see the playback of the thing they've just done, or do you? It sounds like no. you're saying you you hand it over to him. Yeah, yeah. No, I do, I'm not one of those actors that want to look at the playback after every. Take up work with a few of those. Put about you put about a week on the schedule. <laughs> and having uh, Mark mentions <laughs> nil by mouth, was it your idea to get Kathy Burke? No, it was not my idea. It was Thomas's idea. I think that 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 she is. I mean, it's lovely to see her back, and I have a, obviously have a soft spot for Kathy because of uh, the uh, our relationship from nil by mouth. But I think she sort of said, "Well, as it's Gary, and I have a couple of scenes with Gary, I'll come." I'll come back for Gary, but uh, he's been the only one so far, I think, to, uh, to 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 get her out of retirement. You were saying how just before you came in, how how great it is to just come around and talk about a film. Where I mean, the, the reviews are astonishing. Aren't they? They I mean, are, everything. Yes. I I think, mean, just yeah, looking, just, time, just looking at the text and the emails from people who've been, who've been to see it this morning, listening to what Mark's yeah. saying. Look at the poster reviews. Yeah. I mean, it is people we love got, this film. We got five stars from the Guardian. <laughs> I, I'm told it's. I'm told it's a, a, a rare event. It is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, never mind The Guardian, here's Tim in Durham. Just out of Tinker Taylor, which I imagine you're reviewing today, an absolute masterpiece, cast superb. Gary Oldman performance is towering. Oscars galore, if there's any justice. Uh, Giuseppe says, Gary is the, simply the greatest actor of my generation, up there with De Niro and Brando. What makes him even more rare is that he actually has something to say, and in everything he's in, there's always intelligence and talent can't believe we must talk of Justin Timber something in the same show, uh, says uh, Giuseppe. Can I just uh, ask you about one particular scene, which, which, which is cut back to a number of times through the film, that is the Christmas party. Oh, the Christmas party. I've heard John le Carre talk about this. Clearly these yeah. things happened, and they were... Uh, alcohol. In fact, everyone drinks whiskey all day, don't they, in this, uh, well, uh, it, in this film? Yeah, you've, he, what I think also uh, uh, Tomas has captured along with this fantastic cinematographer... Uh, Heute van Heutemann, who the look of the movie is yeah. just it's just gorgeous. He's captured that sort of those brown orange smoke filled rooms with you 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 it's it's dandruff and brill cream and and damp tweed suits. I mean they've captured the the the, the period perfectly. That that scene is not in the book. Um, it it was it came out of an anecdote 
from uh, from John Lucare, who who they used to have these Christmas do's where they would uh, where they would get absolutely you know three three sheets to the wind. So much so, I believe that um, at one night the police were called because of all the noise they were making. I mean, it's so, isn't it ironic that the police have to come around and tell all the spies to shut up because they're too noisy. There's an amazing scene <laughs> where, where Father Christmas turns up with a Lenin's, with Lenin's face on yeah, it, and the right. entire Secret Service, one imagines, are singing the Soviet national anthem. Yeah. And not entirely ironically by the sound of it as yeah. well. Uh, out of the head of Thomas Alfredson, he came up with that. And uh, in fact, um, and it was it was just that thing that uh, uh, many of them would have spoken Russian, but but mm. but 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 Lakari doesn't. He 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 doesn't speak a word of it. He's in that scene, isn't he? He is to the just to the to the right of the the grey haired man to the right of the screen as the shot begins. There are another yeah. reason for me to go and see it again because I missed that first time. How much of your uh, smiley came from watching and talking to John Lakari? Um. Well, I'd like to think that my... Obviously written, from the text, yeah, primarily. But, but from the book, I mean, everything you yeah. really need to know about Smiley is there in that book. Beautiful adaptation by, uh, by Peter and Bridget. Um, and we had access to, to John as a resource if we needed him. I had a breakfast with him. And uh, we, we, in fact, we, d we talked a great deal. He's a great raconteur and he talked and, and, and is a, a wonderful mimic. And we talked about Alec. Guinness in the in you know uh, he told some very funny stories about about Sir Alec um, and I would just watch there's a few things of physical things and a few vocal inflections that I that I have a smiley that I sort of stole from the, from the man. This is a question to, to Mark really as much as to you. Do you do you, lots of people are talking? I mean, and as our emailers have been referring to the possibility of this film winning awards, which it truly should do. It is, Oscar but do time. You, but do you do you think particularly Gary's performance is it's so unshowy? Do performances like that win? Stuff? Well, you know, it is certainly true that historically the the awards, particularly the American awards, tend to uh, tend to lean towards the shouty and the declamatory, and and and. But every now and then things slip under. I mean, I think the most extraordinary thing about the response to Tinker Tailor Soldier, right, which is that it's. I mean, I saw it at BAFTA, you know, earlier on in the week. And I loved it. I loved the fact that the whole thing had the colour palette of cigarette smoke. It just all looked like, you know, that decaying tar that you get on the walls of pubs, you know, before they, they ban smoking. I mean, it was the atmosphere of it. For, for me, in fact, the machinations of the plot and we, we, were less important. Since then, I've spoken to four people whose opinion I admire, who with whom I disagree about many things, all of whom said, yeah, it's just as good as we all think it is. What's extraordinary is... I can't remember the last time people so unanimously embrace something. And it is difficult. It's a difficult film yeah. in which an awful, an awful lot of it requires... It's not just to do with keeping up, but it's keeping three things in your head at the same time mm -hmm. and actually concentrating on the fact that it's not yeah. about that anyway. It's about, I mean, I, th I would be very, very surprised if major awards don't attend it.